Well, let's take a look at what's making world papers. Lauren Bursaker joining us on this. Good morning to you, Lauren. Good morning. Uh, beginning with reactions uh, to Joe Biden's budget proposal, which includes plans to raise taxes on the rich and poor, uh, on the rich and corporations. How are newspapers viewing uh, this here in France? Well, Will, the U.S. president is actually making the front page of French daily Libération with a beautiful picture of uh, Joe Biden wearing his aviator sunglasses. Uh, and he's being called Joe the Taxman, Joe le Taxeur. Uh, <laughs> the newspaper is actually hailing uh, Biden's plan to impose this international uh, minimum tax on, on multinational corporations, calling it a true revolution especially coming from an American president. And of course, a reference to Vanessa Paradis' hit song, uh, Joe the Taxi. Uh, um, now, $5 trillion in new spending over a decade, raising the corporate tax rate and raising taxes for the super rich. These are all moves that until recently were largely frowned on in U.S. politics. So could this be changing with Joe Biden? What are U.S. papers saying about this? Well, uh, the proposal is, in, in fact, coming under a lot of scrutiny in the U.S., uh, which, as you said, has tra traditionally been quite averse to anything relating to big government. Uh, but that does seem to be changing. And when looking at the press, we can see a lot of outlets are actually in favor of, of this new proposal. The New York Times, for instance, is publishing this opinion piece by a former Nobel Economics Prize winner, Paul Krugman, who argues in favor of the proposal, saying that raising taxes on corporations and the rich is a good move that will help the economy. And he's trying to dispel this trickle-down economics myth uh, more in detail in the article. Uh, Krugman does say the plan will not be enough to fund a fully Scandinavian-style wel welfare system in the U.S., but is a step in the right direction. And concludes by saying his biggest concern is actually Democrats trying to water down the proposal, either uh, because they're too deferential to moneyed interests or simply scared of losing voters. Now, that's an argument we can also find in Politico, another U.S. outlet, which warns Democrats could be getting a tax hike anxiety. The article argues that a small but growing number of Democratic lawmakers worry that the tax plan could alienate moderate voters ahead of the uh, next year's midterm elections. Uh, and there's also concern it could turn away Republican lawmakers, making it more complicated to pass legislation through Congress in the future. Now, a final perspective on this issue can be found in Vox, which asks whether the super wealthy could actually find ways around these tax hikes. And the article uh, argues that even if the plan passes, it's likely to contain some legal loopholes which billionaires will uh, be ready to take advantage of. All right, well, let's move on now to Israel for our next story, where a new coalition is looking to challenge Benjamin Netanyahu's 12-year grip on power. Uh, Lauren, take us through uh, some of the reactions in the Israeli papers. Well, let's start by looking at a conservative paper, the Jerusalem Post, which uh, starts by saluting uh, Netanyahu's achievements, including moving the embassy to Jerusalem and getting the U.S. to recognize that move, as well as pulling out of the Iran nuclear deals. Uh, yet, according to the author, who does seem quite pro-Netanyahu, uh, the prime minister will be remembered as the leader who brought arch rivals together for the sole purpose of bringing him down. Uh, the article points out it's not yet set in stone, of course, that Netanyahu will leave, but that does seem the most likely outcome. And this would leave Israel with a kaleidoscope coalition uh, of parties which uh, could only be held together by Netanyahu himself according to the author, uh, the point being that Netanyahu should then become uh, the uh, leader of the opposition and constantly threaten a political comeback, which will force this coalition of parties to stick together and actually make it work. Now, turning to another Israeli outlet, uh, the more liberal Haaretz uh, has a very different perspective and calls this a festive day as it welcomes a government that will finally work for us. Uh, the author slams Netanyahu's divide and rule tenure as uh, prime minister and hails this exceptionally diverse government, which uh, he hopes can implement inclusive policies that will help tackle uh, things such as poverty and unemployment in Israel. So a more optimistic outlook there. And we finish in Hong Kong for our last story, where commemoration of the Tiananmen Square massacre could once again trigger a crackdown by authorities in Hong Kong. Well, it's been a tradition in Hong Kong uh, where uh, candlelight vigils have been held for 30 years. Uh, and except for last year, where, where it was already banned because of COVID-19, and the South China Morning Post tell this, tells us the ceremony will be banned again this year, uh, again, uh, supposedly uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But the paper questions whether this national security law, which recently passed, 
in uh, Hong Kong could also play a role here and predicts that even future commemorations of the Tiananmen uh, massacre could disappear even after COVID-19 uh, ends, hopefully. Uh, the article argues that despite the, even, uh, the event being banned, many Hong Kong people uh, will continue to want us to commemorate uh, this, this event, and they should be able to do so without having to worry about risks, which is not really the case right now, as the local government hasn't been clear really on what's allowed and what's not. And finally, The Guardian also published an article on this matter, uh, reminding us that a commemoration has never been allowed on Chinese mainland for this event, but that uh, this year, with security crackdowns and COVID, um, uh, Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan will not uh, also host commemorations, meaning it's the first time uh, the Chinese-speaking countries uh, will not hold any sort of a official event uh, to commemorate the massacre, except for an online event in Taiwan. All right. Thank you very much, Laura. Lauren Bertzicker with the look at what's making headlines. We'll be back a little bit later. But now, time for a quick break. And then Live from Paris continues. <laughs> <laughs>